Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to another episode of the Prog Talks. I'm your host, Dario. And as always, before we start, yeah, that's right, Marco. Uh, cheers. Um, let me cheers remind you of that Absolutely. cup of coffee, cup of tea. Uh, link in the description helps us out a lot, as always. The mocha. Mocha always helps. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And now, without much further ado, let's welcome Marco Miniman, calling good. from uh, California, I guess. Where are, you, where are you sitting? <laughs> yeah, I'm here in Lake Elsinore, actually, right by the lake. And um, it's probably kind of nine hours earlier than at your place, you know, which I'm also very familiar <laughs> with. Obviously, where you're from, you know, that's my home, my home uh, base where I basically grew up, Germany, you know. But uh, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm in Munich, actually. Um, yeah, I used to live there for a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, of course, uh, we are here today to talk about uh, mainly the aristocrats. And yeah. and uh, before we jump in and uh, and and and, and talk uh, everything about the new album, uh, I just want to reminisce a little bit. The first time I I was happy enough, uh, was lucky enough to see you uh, was actually here at the backstage club a couple of years ago, or like m more than six years ago, probably now seven yeah. maybe. Uh -huh. And I remember your parents dropped by, and I thought that was yeah. super cool and wholesome. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, they always do, which is great. You know, they uh, they're always supportive and love music, and so without them, I wouldn't be probably kind of here. You know, well, obviously, literally, but also um, <laughs> also in the musical sense. <laughs> Wonderful. And then then uh, then um, yeah, I I was uh, actually the stage manager for the Generation Prog Festival. Um, oh. where, where you were playing and 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 there I obviously because I was so busy I didn't really have time to to really enjoy the yeah. performance um but a couple of weeks later on the same tour you you played the Strom in München um that's right um, yeah. yeah um and, and place with, with the buzz with the electronic buzz from the trains <laughs> the train like close by so every time the guitar would be in a weird angle you have like a pretty intense buzz <laughs> <laughs> but yeah cool. but but uh, you, you, like uh, an, an aristocrats concert is always uh, happening where 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 you where you are um spontaneous enough to incorporate anything that happens right <laughs> pretty much you know there's always like little surprises you know but um uh it's kind of basically the aristocrats are a band you know that communicate with the audience you know and are not just playing for ourselves you know so we love to kind of you know give little surprises and communicate and also work together, you know. So yeah, a lot of the stuff is written out and is something to concentrate on, but we also have like stretches where we just, you know, improvise as well, you know, so it's a balance, balance and act a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's very, 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 very interesting angle to look, to look uh, at uh, as far as music goes. Um, just thinking about the last couple of interviews I did, um, we also kind of, at some points we are, we're, discussing you know um music that is written out like to the yeah. last note and music that is spontaneous and and lives through the playing it live together in an ensemble yeah. and um as you said the aristocrats uh, are a, a, like are about all, all about that balance they have, they have it both <laughs> I think so. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> um, of course, of course, you you have uh, four um, proper studio albums out by now. Um, yeah. Since uh, since you started out with the first one, with the self titled one in two thousand eleven, that's already eleven years ago, right? Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> right, time flies. <laughs> and uh, all the way to the last one, uh, you know what? And uh, yeah. then last year, you you uh, put out a proper live record, Freeze, live in Europe. Correct. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, time flies, as you say. Uh, and uh, and and uh, I had the the pleasure to talk to to O'Brien about it um, last year. Um, but now yeah. there's there's another one around the corner. Um, the Aristocrats with the Primus Chamber Orchestra from Poland, right? 
That is correct. Absolutely. Is it, it's out on June 3rd. Yeah, that is correct. And I have to say, I, I was always, I love, I, I love the, the times that I, I saw you live, but I never really gravitated towards um, listening to the Aristocrat studio records, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and now with with the with the new uh, orchestra album, I find I'm uh, since since I got the promo stream, I was like, yeah, I, I want to go back to it and listen to it again, and I want to <laughs> listen to it again. And and I, I had the same same with the with the last couple of interviews I did for the Prog Talks, which is uh, yeah. kind of stressful, but it's it's so. It, it, on, on the other hand, it's just a testament to how much yeah. I dig the music when I when oh. I'm when I'm setting everything up for for the for the episode. And yeah. and I'm listening to the album we're going to talk about, and I and I and I don't want to stop it. <laughs> oh man, that's great! That's, that's nice to hear. I think the album came out really nice, you know, and it was like a surprise, you know, for you and for us as well, because you know how it came together and um, was like you know basically completely from a back road, from a completely different angle. Because yeah, you know, tell us, <laughs> tell us. Yeah. That would be my next question. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely, happily so. Um, uh, it was, I think. One of our managers actually who found a clip of these very guys playing one of our songs just as an orchestra version. And uh, I think with the guitar player and they did Culture Clash, that song. <clears throat> and so we listened to it and we, we loved it. We were like, holy cow, this is really good. And so we got in touch with them and thanked them. And then um, I don't know who came up with it first, but, you know, Either way, them or us, you know, they were like suggesting, hey, we could do like maybe another song. And then we were like, hang on, how about we do an entire album with this? Would you guys be up, you know, for that? And so, yeah, well, we discussed like the logistics and how to kind of arrange it. And they were very enthusiastic about it. And uh, well, there you go. A year later, we have an entire album in the can. So uh, and it came out wonderfully, I guess, you know, like the way. Wojtek, actually the, the main arranger uh, and, and conductor, arranged um, the orchestra bits on top of our music was fascinating, you know, and it's just exactly the opposite of heh, what our band really stands for. Since we're a trio, you know, really just kind of stripped down and, you know, uh, guitar, bass and drums, all of a sudden it's like an entire orchestra with our music. And I guess, you know, it showcases also that... Um, you know, that the songs can live and breathe like in different environments, which I guess has a lot of beauty to it, you know. And so, so yeah, this is how it came together. And we're all very pleased about it, in fact, you know. So so how did you pick pick out the songs? Which songs uh, were to be arranged? And and then how did the recording go? Did you, did, I, I, I would assume that you recorded remotely or did you have the ability to and, and the time to fly over no. and, or something? It, it was a perfect, um, like our last um, record, Freeze, well, our last studio album was uh, obviously, um, you know what, the album. And then actually we did the Freeze album as a, you know, testimony or as, as a souvenir to our fans because it was just like when the, you know, when the pandemic happened. So that's when that kind of thing, you know, came to mind. But um, the orchestra album that was still during lockdowns and whatnot, so we did it remotely and... Uh, the orchestra did obviously together in a room and we sent files, you know, along, you know, but it worked out great. And um, you can see it in the video footage that is already posted and stuff like that, how it, you know, kind of magically came together. But it was also like a labor of uh, love and uh, during the pandemic to kind of really overcome, like, you know, the challenges of what happened you know, in the world. And I guess, you know, that's really, you know, all you could do by the time. And you got to, you know, make sense of, of, of these things and kind of, you know, try to be creative and put something out there, you know, that is that is great and gives people joy. You know, what else can you do? And uh, it's um, only appropriate to to be touring, actually, right now after the release date, which is June 3rd, indeed. And now that things are opening up again and bands start touring again and... Uh, so we can start to have, you know, fun going out on the roads again. And so I guess, you know, the release date is kind of perfectly aligned, you know, with with what, what's going to happen with gigs and, and so forth. Yeah, right. You have a you have a you have a huge North American tour now. So oh, yeah. How, yeah. how long is that going to be? It's three months almost. <laughs> <laughs> That's that a long road, time. <laughs> road warriors, huh? <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, let's let's uh, stick to to the 
orchestra album for a second still here. Um, yeah. I'm 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 really interested how 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 you how you picked the songs and, and like if if yeah. there was one one of you. I would say the four of you, like the three of the band and 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 maybe Wojtek, the orchestra arranger and conductor, who 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 took kind of the creative lead, or did you do it all democratically? Or <laughs> yeah, pretty much, you know, because we are at the end of the day the songwriters. Yeah, that's right. Sorry for sorry for the other detour. That's right. We wanted to talk about like the essence of the songs, but it's um. So we all picked each of our individual songs we wrote and thought, okay, let's see what they can do. And what they like to do. And so um, that was a conscious decision from our end, you know. So each of us picking our, not favorite songs, but the songs that would be working with the orchestra together. And um, I think it came out together quite nicely because if you have like, if you see like the diversity, uh, the palette of what we have to offer, songs like um, Last Orders, for example, that's like a very quiet song where a lot of, space can you know uh, is present to be you know filled or kind of or to be created uh, 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 creative with and um, then there's like a song like stupid seven which is like a pretty fast and almost punk rock jazz kind of song mm -hmm. you know where there's like a lot of facility and a lot of fast and tight notes to be played and so that for the orchestra was probably kind of more like um, a challenge you know in an interesting way because like as you know like strings have like a little bit of a delay you have to kind of you know play a little bit ahead to kind of you know then you know uh put it in sync together with the band so so we have like you know exactly these opposite sides actually in the production to offer and um i guess that that's that's what really kind of to me it has like the most exciting one of is one of the most exciting features of that album that we have like this wide palette Since we're all individual songwriters, actually, uh, that, that came together that way. But yeah, that's how we kind of picked the songs, kind of to see like, okay, diversity, you know, and also the beauty of it, you know, and see like, okay, how far can we stretch this uh, opportunity to uh, and, and, and create with it? So what, was, it, was it the first time for you to, to, to play with an orchestra track because i think you're you're very busy and and i i would assume that 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 you're doing a lot of stuff that like as a, like in as a session drummer that that yeah. we don't know about basically so i would assume probably you've, you've you've done this before or in different environments probably without you you yeah. being the main songwriter <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, definitely. I've worked with a lot of different bands and also orchestra settings. I had a big band once, actually, on one of my DVDs, like the Buddy Rich big band. So, and I played with them together in the room, and then we record. So, yeah, I'm I'm aware of how these settings work and how you <laughs> have to either like, drive a band or kind of you know be integrated in, in in a setting like that. So you get with the more with more experience under your belt. You get a little wiser on how to make decisions and how to kind of approach <laughs> things in a musical manner. But yeah, 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 you're right, actually, because I'm, yeah, I'm fortunate enough, you know, knock on wood, you know, to be one of the most booked studio musicians right now, which is which is not a bad problem to have. That's good. <laughs> I like that. So, but um, I get I gather this 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 experience and kind of really um try to become musically as rich as possible and wise as possible you you never stop learning and that's the beauty of it you know you always kind of you know get like new input you know from the next generations from different areas of music and that's great so yeah, <laughs> yeah well, one other thing i i always wondered as like uh like myself i classically trained with cello and and, and mm. vocals and and these are obviously all like melody instruments and yeah. um for 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 uh, mm. like drummers as creative as you are um i always wondered how how it is for you in especially in an environment like with the aristocrats where you have um brian beller and and Guthrie govan alongside you yeah. uh who often take the melodic lead and the spotlight in that in that sense um and i noticed also on on the on the, on the new album there's there's a lot of melodic bass stuff uh, from 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 Brian happening that is maybe coming a little bit more to the forefront uh, with a with a quieter um you know orchestra backdrop mm -hmm. um 
Uh, so, so how it is for you to 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 as a musician, as a drumming musician, to yeah. to do like on the one hand, kind of compete with with these, and on the on the other hand, maybe to 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 fit in and find your place in yeah. in the musical tapestry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's. Um, I think you know that's why we all write individually songs, you know, so that we can that we have this palette to offer and that we also have this variety where you can say like oh okay this song is specifically designed for drum fireworks and and then there's like you know songs you know that are specifically just designed you know for you know for for space and where you kind of just play with brushes or maybe a few things with sticks or something and that's i think you know great to have that balance so we never really are competitive players i th i guess you know that was <laughs> you, you you i think those musicians you know who, who will go through that you know it's probably when you're in your late teenage years or early 20s that's when people still want to kind of talk a lot and kind of go like hang on i'm here but um i guess you know we we're over the point you know and 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 uh I and mean, also, you've been playing together for such a long time that, yeah. that you probably have a very intuitive way of interacting with each other. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. And we don't have anything to to prove of facility, you know, like to the people. The audience knows that we have facility, but it, it would be foolish to always in every song use all the horsepowers you have. You know, it's <laughs> good to keep that under the hood, but then on and off kind of accelerate and go for it, you know. So... I guess that's really what makes the uh, aristocrats also like a hopefully a bit special and enjoyable, you know, that we have this palette to offer and that we are, um, you know, playing always for the composition and never for the technical aspect, you know? So, uh, yeah, if that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess it does. Yeah. Um, let's, let's see what, what our listeners will make out of it. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, um, um, Guthrie is, is quite busy also touring the world with with an orchestra with Hans Zimmer, obviously. So, yeah. so I think uh, a lot of friends also who are big fans of of, of Guthrie's playing, in particular, um, uh, when they heard that the Aristocrats are going to do um, an, an, an orchestra album, they said, "Yes, mm, that's not very surprising to me, and it uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense." <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm wondering. Actually, I'm going to write with with Hans about it. You know. And uh, let's see what he thinks. I never, I never, um, I, I'm sure he likes it. He's a lovely guy. I met him a few times and he's a, he's a great guy and he's a big fan of our band and, and, uh, and we are fans obviously of him, uh, of his work as well. So uh, it's a very, very nice and, and lovely relationship, you know, between all of us. And since Hans is also like a fellow German, you know, and he lives here actually as well, not too far away. Maybe he's going to even watch this. So uh, <laughs> And uh, I, I'm curious actually about his input. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to write him about it. <laughs> But I'm yeah. I'm almost positive. He, he, he. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, next ne next next time we talk, you you you'll have to fill us in what you said. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wonderful. Um, but of course, the Aristocrats is not your only uh, uh, band or only project. You uh, you just mentioned you're very busy. You're you're very sought after um there is, is there any any pro projects uh worthy of mention that or that you would like to mention uh, that that uh, yeah. released something in the last uh, like recent times absolutely and um you see i'm trying to concentrate <clears throat> more on like you know a few things that are very dear to me and the rest i really keep as as you would say like projects or studio jobs or sessions you know but My main bands would be absolutely, obviously, the Aristocrats, and then uh, Max Stein and Miniman, which I did with, um, which I'm doing with Randy Max Stein, fantastic musician, great guitar player, singer, bass player, multi instrumentalist, who just got announced as touring uh, member of Porcupine Tree, right? Exactly, exactly, and uh, and then myself, and I play many. I'm a multi instrumentalist, really. So, so Randy and I, when we create our albums, it's really the just the two of us playing all instruments and composing. And now we got pretty much completed as a band for live shows, which went incredibly well, I have to say. We're really pleased with that, with Mohini Day on bass and wow. uh, Nick, Nick De Virgilio on keyboards, guitars, uh, keyboards and guitars, and also on drums. 
we do like some double drumming as well and he also wow. sings so so does mohini so we have a pretty cool band together and we did like two shows on the cruise to the edge and just like the day before yesterday at a music festival in banning an open air fest and uh those shows went incredibly well i gotta say people loved it we loved it and um good vibes and the band sounds great and we excuse me we just are releasing our third record we did uh, two albums already and the third album is go gonna come out i think um around september or october you know we're just finishing putting on the finishing touches so yeah these two these two things i would really like to mention so it's the aristocrats and max stein and minimum yeah i gotta write it down and 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 i, I guess it's also a good uh good um place to mention that people who are listening and and are not following you uh, or uh, your various bands socials um should yeah. definitely do so so they get alerted when there's a, a release date for for True. such a thing as the new McStein Miniman album right that exactly the other thing i'm actually quite proud of also what i just released is like a three track ep and we're working on uh, more with a singer songwriter called Kendall Yates and she has a great voice and a great vibe and uh Alex Lifeson from Rush um recorded with us for one song which is just released which is called Malibu and it's uh, I'm especially uh, I'm I'm pretty proud of what we did there because it came completely from the other side of the planet of what people would kind of expect me to be um because I have a deep appreciation for like this dark vibe deserty americana kind of sound you know <laughs> uh, and she totally does that like it's very dark and hauntingly beautiful a lot of space and uh and i love it and so does alex alex lives and loves that and so we did like a three um track ep for now and um you'll find it on my websites as well and i think it came out really really nice and It was so funny because I was wondering when I posted the first song and then the second and then finally the third, I thought like, man, people will probably go like, what the fuck is this? You know, like, what, <laughs> what are they doing? But it got a lot of love. People got it. They got the vibe and the concept of it. And I think that proves that I think our audience, like especially proc and rock and jazz audiences, have big ears. And get it. It doesn't always have to be complicated, loud, or whatnot. The, the beauty of it is always the most important thing. And I was so happy to prove it with that production, particularly that, uh, yeah, that people just also kind of can be listeners and get the vibe more of it rather than the facility. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but these three things come to mind immediately just by mentioning my recent creative output. And also show like three completely different sides of my yeah life. yeah it's, I'm, I'm I'm really really intrigued and and I'm 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 surely gonna listen right away um, to Kendall Yates uh, we're gonna we're gonna yeah. link it link it up of course as well um, on the YouTube uh, description and everywhere yeah. um, so so you guys out there can find it uh, I'm super intrigued by it and you mentioned that the, like the, the more dark and 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 uh, dark side of americana with the aristocrats i always have i have a feeling there's a lot of super fun western vibes going yeah, with it right? <laughs> i don't even know how that came to be you know it was like all of a sudden it started i guess yeah, with, I um, yeah <laughs> we started to make a thing out of it you know and um i think on our first album i wrote a song there actually one of my songs was on the first album called blues fuckers which kind of messes with like a lot of blues cliches in a loving way, you know, nobody hates there. It was like really just kind of a persiflage a little bit. And on the second album, that's when we started to kind of have songs, you know, like Louisville Stomp, or then on the third album, but Louisville Stomp was one of Brian's, and then Kentucky Meat Shower, that was one of Guthrie's on, on uh, the Tres Caballeros album. And so, yeah, all of a sudden, for each album, we have like a little bit of a Western twang to it here. <laughs> like for, one, for one song of each album or so. Which is obviously great, you know, especially for a guitar player like Guthrie, because he can just nail that stuff, you know. And he can, just, you know, what I mean. So it's a it's a fun aspect, and it's and it's great to to have a little bit of that in that too. <laughs> yeah, I would I would I would definitely say that that um, 
the ballad of Bonnie and Clyde. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's especially in the new orchestral version. I think right. you already put out the the video for it uh, as a as a, as a as a kind of single. Um, That's right. Um, that is just so epic. <laughs> um, it is. That came together yeah. quite uh, monumental, didn't it? You know, when you yeah hear yeah you, you, everything like like, oh, like where, right. where 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 is where is um, yeah yeah M M Morricone. Right, Maurice. right. <laughs> I was I was about to say early on in this interview. I thought like when we talked about Hans, uh, Hans Zimmer's kind of stuff. We thought I thought like man, you know, maybe we should do like a film music. You know, that should be our next project. Absolutely, a lot um, of money. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> all those film composers, right? You know, come on. You know? <laughs> well, you 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 have a good connection to one 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 of the biggest one already true, true, true. yeah yeah you never know you know what will happen you know we could maybe cooperate on some sort it would be fun <laughs> you never know <laughs> yeah i think you fans would love it and 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 yeah. i also would think that that uh, soundtrack fans who are not really aware of what prog is would really dig your input true <laughs> prog is a very wide uh how do you say like you know um I'm variety right. <laughs> meanwhile of, of styles you know meanwhile because prog used to be this thing where people would think about like elves and wizards dancing around in the forest <laughs> you know and, and taking says way too serious and doing like all those like 12 minute songs you know that was like prog but meanwhile when you kind of go you know towards the essence of prog and dissect it a little bit it's anything that is like a little bit out of the box really isn't it you know and i think uh Uh, it becomes like a really cool genre, you know, so you can have like, you know, Gentle Giant, but also bands like maybe us, you know, or the thing I'm doing with Randy, it can all be prog, you know, you have like the experimental sides or like the, like the earlier King Crimson kind of stuff, but then <laughs> as well bands like, or, or artists like Zappa, even Queen is certain, certainly prog in, in a I, certain way. Maybe so, not, yes. <laughs> right? Uh, uh, maybe not as defined, you know, as you would say, like the typical prog bands that we used to know in the 70s and 80s, where you go like, yeah, prog is, yes, <laughs> Amazon, Lake and Palmer, and, uh, you know, Genesis, <laughs> Genesis, maybe by that time. But meanwhile, it becomes a much wider genre. And I kind of like that, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. I yeah. definitely agree with you on that. Um, yeah. I, I, I was uh, thinking about uh, about something entirely different here when when I mentioned that you put out the the ballad of Bonnie and Clyde as a YouTube and uh, as a YouTube video and uh, I think also on Facebook. Um, you are uh, releasing the music of the Aristocrats entirely by yourselves as a, on a yeah. DIY label kind of thing, right? Yeah, we have our own label, but uh, pretty much, and we have our own crew re releasing. Um, that and that's actually pretty much I gotta give props to Brian there because see after the show for example Guthrie and I like to hang and drink and enjoy ourselves <laughs> Brian sometimes too but Brian is also a very good businessman <laughs> and so we like that so there is like a certain um, uh, chemistry there you know where we can go like ah we have at least like one guy in the band <laughs> who loves doing all that shit I hate it, <laughs> but Brian loves it and he keeps tracks of numbers and he loves to kind of find out about distribution deals and all yeah. these kind of things. So that's actually a really cool bonus. And then obviously our own uh with our management, we chose wisely who we have actually, you know, in our entourage, so to speak. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we like to do this ourselves because, you know, um, our operation is going quite successfully now for over a decade. And, uh, It would be foolish to really change it up, you know, if, if it's not broken, so to speak, right? So I guess, I guess we keep going that way, and um, and we keep our publishing. And to to, to yourselves, that's 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 awesome to 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 hear that that you've been doing so well with like like also financially, uh, as it sounds with with the, with the as complicated music as uh, yeah. the Aristocrats is. Um, one particular sure. thing, I, thing I mentioned with the release of the singles, I think um, I, I never saw the singles on the streaming services uh, by the time they were put out on YouTube, and and that, uh, so I wondered if this that like like a like a reasoning behind it, um, as as you know, with the prog space, I always do these these 
Spotify playlists. Um, we have yeah. one on, on Fridays for the album releases, uh, which is the releases of the week playlist. And then we have uh, one on Mondays where we yeah. compile the, the uh, new singles, uh, which is called the What's Hot playlist. Oh yeah. And so so then I saw okay, awesome new aristocrats single, and then yeah. then then I went wanted to add it to the Spotify players and it was not there yet. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. Um, yeah, there are like you know certain streaming platforms you know where we disagree also you know who we disagree with you know because they underpay you know bands. On the other hand, yeah, you want to get your music out, but I don't think yeah, literally at not at all costs. You know what I mean? Actually, I like the way I said that. And uh, <laughs> because I think, you know, um, you should be aware of bands kind of getting, you know, their share, their fair share, you know. And um, so we chose it a little, yeah, uh, with with more consciousness, you know. And, you know, we might release those things like a little later than after, you know, the main sales happened, you know, from the physical products or from the downloads that are going into our, straight into our pocket. But, you know, like, Places that you just mentioned and stuff like that. Yeah, you can't really avoid them at some point, you know, but you, you know, you can definitely maybe delay the release a little bit to kind of go like, look, okay, let's make our money back from that kind of thing and have a little bit of that. And then later, yeah, okay, you can have it there too, where you get like five cents per year for the whole album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. It's, 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 uh, it's a big dis discussion, uh, of course, in the whole music industry, not only in the prog world um there's uh, a, a lot of changes happening uh a, a lot of changes have been happening yeah in the last 20 years already oh, and yeah. and it's it it keeps changing and and it's 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 really hard to keep track and and it, it's also hard to to maybe it's not so hard to keep track because it, you if you go with the flow you will always uh like get yeah. your music somehow but um I think it for for someone who is uh, who is into the music and and would like to 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 really also support the artist he likes, um, and still wants you know to 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 check out the, like some new bands and and there's then there, there's bands who who are categorically against streaming and everything. So if you want to listen to their music, you have to buy their product to buy their CD or something. And not not everyone can afford 100 CDs a year. I'm exaggerating, of course, but so so yeah. there's there, there's a certain um, yeah there, there's a lot to think about. Um, I I I think as a band, um, yeah. if there's there's something you can do to maybe try and and steer the thing in a direction that's gonna be better for the artists. Yeah. Or or if all hope is lost and you just say, ah, oh, fuck it. We we want people to yeah. be able to discover yeah. us. Um it and yeah. I think it also has uh something to do with um with the uh level you're already in. Like if you're starting out, nobody knows you and you yeah. you're not happening on the streaming services, there's yeah. there's like rarely a chance that people are gonna find out about you, right? True. Exactly. I think, you know, what really works, and that is especially, we experienced that luck like, with um, the release I did with uh, Candle, I uh, talked earlier on. We just released it on Bandcamp, and and where you have the chance to go like, hey, you know, we sell one song for three ninety nine, and that's a total fair price if you kind of, you know, you work your ass off here. You know, you write that song, and then you produce it yourself. You mix it and master it, all this kind of stuff, and even make like a little video for social media for this. It's a lot of work. So you're yeah, proud of it. You're and proud And then, of, and then yeah. you also have to pay the artist who does the cover artwork, right? All this kind of stuff, right? <laughs> and then you have to put it out and you put it out and you're very, very proud of it. And, you know, and it's the most, I mean, most people give us love, you know, but then they have all of, on top of it, then, you know, some people feel entitled to kind of, you know, judge your music or kind of, you know, talk shit about it and stuff. And you go like, man. See, why don't you go to a different website or something, you know, let the followers enjoy it and stuff like that. So the music, the times are are, are, are tough for certain artists, especially for new artists. So I was hoping for the release with Kendall that she would get a lot of love. And she did, which was great. There were rarely bad comments or something, but I was more worried about her than about any one of <laughs> others involved because she's a young upcoming artist. And mm -hmm. you know, 
people and you know so when you're not when you didn't grow a thick uh, skin yet you know you you get more vulnerable to do mm-hmm. those kind of things so i was kind of really hoping that she would get like um great response and she and she did you know but the thing what also was was great was when we released that uh when we released those songs we wrote and produced it, um that people really gave love to this uh, product financially you could tell that we attract with the kind of music we do also the right and quotation mark people who really enjoy it and who appreciate the art of it and not just go like oh cool uh, free mp3 up uh, whatever we just listen to it on youtube and fuck it no um um because you can sell it for 399 or more yeah. and we were very very humbled when actually i think a great percentage of people gave actually more like somebody transferred forty dollars or more for one song so i'm going hey i love what that is you guys deserve it this kind of stuff so there is like a whole turning point in music like first of all it was like okay no more cds no more uh other kind of platforms cool oh oh everything for free great ah oh, fuck it yeah we get everything for free now all of a sudden it turned around people were kind of tired of it all of a sudden and go like shit how do these guys what do they live off <laughs> and wait a minute we actually support them you know what that is it is, is exactly there's like this experiment they did here out in the desert and um they had like an open air library so to speak that was like or not open air but it was an open door it was basically a house like a little kind of shack and they had like cds vinyl books in there but they always kept the door open so you could anyone can walk in and the only sign that says on the door is like hey take a book bring it back or not or maybe bring it back and bring another book back as well you know and and it worked people are were respectful to that place and just treated it with love you know whereas if the door would be locked or something somebody would maybe break and then vandalize it but if it's all of a sudden there for free People will always start going like, oh shit, somebody's really putting effort in there. We want to respect that. And I guess that's what's happening. That's I guess that's what's happening right now a little bit with music. I can feel that there's like a certain turning point. And I hope it keeps going, you know. Yeah. You 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 also uh, release your um the McStein Miniman stuff on on Bandcamp primarily, right? Yeah. That, mm-hmm. that is that yeah. that is your main platform uh, distribution platform. And uh and yeah, I I, I think that's uh it's a great thing also that they that they started to do the at least the bandcamp fridays um, yeah. um and kept that going for as 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 for many musicians the touring aspect just like kind of broke away from one day to the other true true um, Absolutely. yeah i mean that that was a great platform bandcamp was great you know especially during the pandemic you know to help like people out with bandcamp friday as you mentioned which is still going yeah, and uh, it helps everyone. It helps Bandcamp, it helps the artists, and it helps the audience actually as well to decide, you know, and kind of keep an open eye out for artists. Yeah, looking looking at the numbers that Band Bandcamp is like that that are going through Bandcamp to the artists that they're releasing. It's uh, I think it's it's amazing to see yeah. uh, how also um, how many smaller artists have a chance there to to, yeah. to get their music out directly to their fans. Um, no, no, like middleman, no, no labels who who absolutely, who, who absolutely grab a big uh, chunk of it before yeah. the before last cent re- kind of... reaches reaches the artist. Absolutely that. So, so now it's up to us to kind of you know become better at producing and recording and then um, offering a fine product. So there's always a benefit, right? You know, so the universe learns you know and develops so there is like evolution in any in anything right yeah yeah <laughs> wonderful that's i think that's a that's a great uh sentiment uh to 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 end this episode on <laughs> okay yeah. marker it's been it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you uh thank Likewise. you for for taking the time uh you 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 guys out there as i as i already mentioned uh, do uh yourself a favor i'll listen to the aristocrats it's absolutely fun, and also don't forget to to like and 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 subscribe all their socials, like Marco's personal uh, socials, as well as for the Aristocrats and their members who are also like Brian Beller, um, Guthrie Gowen, 
doing amazing stuff with other um, bands and and also solo stuff. Really great stuff. Follow them on their social platforms so you uh, you'll get notified when there's something new. But for now, the newest newest thing is the Aristocrats with the Primus Chamber Orchestra from Poland coming out on Ju- June 3rd. That's right. uh, before we go, of course, don't forget to like and subscribe for to our channels as well, the Prog Space. Um, we appreciate it a lot. Uh, same with that cup of coffee, cup of tea. Helps yep. us out a lot. And thank you, thank you so much for listening. Um, hope to uh, you, you're going to tune in next week as well. Until that, take care and keep spreading that prog love. The Prog Talks. Produced by the Prog Space. Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynos. Produced by Rune Belsvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zach Munovitz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week.